Hey, what's up, guys? It's Oakley, and I'm joined by Indie Pride. Hey, what's going on, guys? And as you can see, snow is falling on our army. The storm is brewing, not only literally, but also figuratively. The storm of war is upon us. I am bringing to the battlefield a huge barbarian tribe arrayed in front of us. I have the Caledonian tribes allied with the tribes of the Saxony here. Moving forward, a lot of new equipment that they're looking forward to testing out uh, against Indy's forces approaching from the other side of the battlefield. This is going to be a big one. Huge land forces plus naval forces. Uh, for now, we'll go over the main kind of armies on land. Indy, what do you have on the battlefield? Alright, so I am rocking with a front rank of a bunch of legionaries, as you'd expect with Rome. In the back here, we have some Praetorian Cav with the, I guess these are, yeah, these are just like the high tier elite Roman cavalry. And we have Herculeani, which are gonna be anchoring center of my line. And they have a Draco standard. That's, those are the Avocati. And then, yeah, the Herculeani right here. Rock with the Draco standard, not really sure why, because I thought that was the cavalry thing, but still look, looking pretty badass. Out here on the flanks, got some skirmishers just to throw some javelin support in there, that armor piercing. If I can get behind the shields, it do a lot of damage for me. And then, yeah, Evocati out on the flank. So, of course, with Rome, and honestly, with every single faction on the field today, lots of swords, lots of barbarians, lots of javelins. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, and you have an armored uh, Marco Mani for us, I guess, next to you. Uh, so lots of Germanic tribes going to be taking the field here. Uh, and so Indi it's Indy and I with our two kind of fodder AI forces that are going to come and duke it out while we kind of sit and plod very Skaven-like in the background, allowing our, our allies uh, to kind of... Uh, wet the field before we commit. Yeah, and then out here on the open plain, or actually on the on the ocean, we've got a bunch of naval battles going on here. So we've got the Hexarines from the Roman Legionaries. I am going to be with the Marco Mani again. And right now, the Assault Raiders, Germanic Band, and everything are looking to maybe just abandon me, abandon my navy uh, <laughs> to the, the Saxony and the Caledonians out here. But we'll see where they decide to go. We don't have massive navy the marco mani definitely aren't fantastic out on the open sea romans are though so i'm gonna have some naval superiority here i do have the best ships but i am a little bit outnumbered in terms of how many ships are on the ocean so it should be a really interesting naval engagement for sure yeah, so this is kind of a cool one to bring uh, to bear here, I guess. Like you said, you have a lot of these big guys. You have the Hexarium, some of t some with towers mounted on them. Uh, that's pretty formidable Roman force. Uh, <laughs> like you said, your ally's abandoning you. Uh, let's take a look at what I have on my side. My ally seems like he's getting ready to abandon me, but he's going to do an about face when we get the battle started. And so on our side, you see a lot of these kind of raider ships, almost like turtle vessels. Not much nuance or engineering to it, these are just big raiding platforms to get over and swarm Indy's forces. So we'll see kind of who has the advantage here. All right, you uh, about ready to get this popping? Yeah, let's watch the naval engagement get underway. All right, let's go three, two, one, prize play and get into it. All right, so my Quinquirim, I don't know even know how to say that. Do you, Oakley, do you know how to say that? The Quinquirim? Quinquirim, yeah, that's gonna open up fire with the artillery right now and get some really nice flaming shots in. It is snowy, and honestly, the flaming balls have never been fantastically accurate. You know that me and Oki love our flaming balls on Rome, too. And we're gonna get some opening shots, opening salvos with the artillery ships. I'm the only person on the field right now who has any of that artillery ship going on. So I can kind of force the engagement on my own terms, get some good shots in, get a little bit of kills here, actually kind of clipping the edge of the unit, kill three of those Germanic Axe Warriors, and then close in. And that's where my Hex Reams are really gonna do a lot of their damage. When they close into melee, when they board, when they smash into the enemy vessels, I should be able to knock some right out of the battle right off the start. And I am looking at your ally. He is, uh, <laughs> he says he doesn't like the sea here <laughs> and he's gonna go ahead and disembark on land, reinforcing the uh, the forces here. So this is kind of a cool little move on his part, but definitely abandoning you. And it seems like you have kind of pricked my ally a little bit with your, <laughs> you, you poked the hornet's nest. So now he's gonna be doing an about face with his forces. So it's a nice chance to try and knock out a big group of units with your artillery, but uh, it may not be the best decision for you. We'll see how the naval engagement gets underway here. Yeah, and two ships have collided now, and it looks like my legionaries are going to close in some melee with a bunch of the Germanic Axe Warriors as they try to board. And I have to say, oh my god, that was vicious. Got some really nice jab shots, and dudes looking like pin cushions on the other boat. Uh, the, the boarding animations are not the best thing about naval combat in Rome 2. As you see, Michael Jordan, LeBron James jumping from one boat to the other, like kind of clipping through the boats here, but we're getting some really good jab shots and shredding them in melee. So as soon as we kind of close in here, these Germanic Axe Warriors are going to get completely run over. And now my really big ships are starting to close in as well, slamming into the flank of some of these smaller vessels. Painted Warriors closing in. 
This is going to get a really nice charge in from the flank. Oh, that did some serious damage. Uh, yeah, the hull damage up to 20% here. And all across the open ocean here, getting some big engagements going on right now. Yeah, so you're, you're getting some pretty good wins against my guys. I see a couple of my ships starting to, yeah, really heavy damage. So your ramming is doing a number on me. But the problem is my ally is turning about. And once you're engaged against me, he's just going to come around and swarm. Uh, so it's a matter of can you sink my ships quick enough before this guy gets it at you. Yeah, and it seems like the barbarian vessels do have strong enough hull strength that they can resist the first couple strikes. Uh, normally when you go into ramming mode, you want to get two or three strikes before you can actually finish off some of these bigger vessels. And yeah, the whole strength has really kept you in the fight in these initial engagements, which means I don't really have the opportunity to pull back and, and charge again. Some of them are even getting locked in right here. My um, my flagship, the Hexareem, is just completely locked up with one of your um, vessels out on the right flank. And I am maneuvering to get in from the side and actually charge in and do a number on some of these. Uh, actually, I'm going to hit my own ship here and maybe even sink it. But I'm basically trying to outflank you out on the far end and just destroy all your vessels as quickly as possible, but it's not really working out too well for me at the moment. Yeah, and uh, the problem is, yeah, like we said, just numbers. I mean, you have the advantage. I see a couple of my ships going down. My Archer Raider ships have been pretty helpful. They kind of push through the middle of them getting some fire shots, and now they're gonna be trailing after your artillery. It looks like I actually have one of my Raider vessels gonna see your guys off, because otherwise, artillery ships in the background can do a lot of damage against fixed units. Yeah, so you're chasing off one of mine, and I'm trying desperately to get away, and I'm going to pop double speed on them, and they will be able to kind of put a little bit of space in between that medium assault raider. But meanwhile, let's take a look at what's happening on yeah, the Yeah, go land ahead and look at the, look at the shoreline. I had brought some archers to kind of shoot back at these guys who were disembarking. So a couple of them got out of reach, but now my archer is in like a supporting position, uh, firing at the guys kind of at sea to cover my guys here. It's kind of a cool little engagement we got going on. And yeah, meanwhile, the Marco Mani have closed into melee with the Saxone. And we got Wolf Warriors, Gadrit Swordsmen, and a whole bunch of angry barbarians going at it. And this should be a lot of fun. I love seeing the Wolf Warriors and Berserkers in action. This is why you play as the Marco Mani, why you play as the Swaby. To get those crazy Berserker dudes with the axes just close in and start slaying stuff. And Marco Mani are going to trade pretty well in a lot of these engagements, of course. The Wolf Warriors, not very high armor, but they do have a great missile block chance. Taking a bunch of friendly, actually, some faux javelins to the rear. The Wolf Warriors in the front getting completely surrounded and cut to pieces. But out further out on the Marco Mani right flank, things are going better. They're kind of overwhelming the Saxons there. And the Saxon light infantry certainly will not trade well against the Noble Swordsmen or any of these Berserker units that are operating out on the flank. Yeah, I'm looking at this, and just as this swarm is coming in, like you said, they have a bit of an advantage, but there's something interesting in the center. We did give the Saxone some German pikes. Not quite sure about the historicity of that, but it's going to help them kind of hold the center against the barbarians here. You can see them kind of starting to push forward. So this is going to be a little bit of an interesting thing to see uh, barbarian phalangites move up like this. Yeah, I, again, I, I think I've never heard of pikes being used in, like widely, and there are a lot of factions in Empire Divided that have them. The Paul Myrene Empire has elite pikes that are actually incredible that you, you guys will probably get to see in some of these siege battles. But uh, yeah, in terms of adding more unit variety, it's good because you're going to be lacking maybe a little bit of that in a DLC like Empire Divided. But in terms of like seeing... One thing that we have noticed is the pikes actually operate very well uh, on this DLC. Like they, I don't know if they made changes from the base game to now, but I don't know if you'll see it in this replay in particular, but they push forward and actually operate like a unit, which is something that was previously lacking in some of the earlier iterations of uh, Rome 2 DLCs and, and content in general. So it's kind of nice to be able to see these pikes actually hold their own and perform well. They're definitely doing pretty good right here. Here, I had them in the force and they kind of jumped a couple of these uh, Marco Mani troops. And they're going to be kicking ass. At yeah, the Bars vs. Infantry is a really big deal, and we'll see these Gotha Shadows go to work. Again, not sure what the uh, historical origin of this unit is. Uh, probably just to add a little bit more variety in there. But yeah, they will absolutely do a number on these armored Germanic swords. Let's take a look here. Um, they're Actually, they're at half HP right now, but they've slain a bunch of Germanic band, which to be fair are the lowest tier Germanic unit. And then the armored Germanic swords will probably perform better, but they don't have that bonus versus infantry. And 15 bonus versus infantry can really trade very cost effectively with uh, much higher tier units. If you can get them into a flanking position, get them into the rear of a unit, you can absolutely slaughter stuff, which is a lot of fun. Yeah, so I'm gonna go back and look at the main line. It looks like the pikes, uh, yeah, they're actually really helping to turn that center tide. Maybe the flanks are being crushed a bit. 
Um, but this is a pretty close engagement. Uh, we can take a look at the uh, the engagement at sea. My archer support of all the ships kind of in close proximity to the shore has been critical. It's allowed me to really clean up the vessels engaging our guys, uh, help turn the tide there. So that means we have a couple extra free ships. Uh, and I'm taking a look at the remaining Roman vessels. Looks like I've been able to gang up on some of your, uh, yeah, with my missile raiders and a couple raider ships, get in on one of your ships that I see is currently sinking uh, out in the back, but then the main engagement that was originally taking place is kind of at a standstill uh, with the troops locked aboard the ships. Yeah, my Hexareem got completely surrounded by a bunch of Saxon vessels, and it looks like one of yours as well, the medium assault raider with the Celtic swordsman, and so, the Roman legionaries are actually holding out incredibly well. They routed two of the ships, uh, 30, yeah, 30 armored Germanic swordsmen routing there. They won't stick around for very long. And honestly, completely surrounded here on the Hexarene, but this is the benefit of having a very powerful hull strength and the great Marines, basically. They're able to fend off against many lesser troops, and they've gotten a ton of kills here, but they're up to 62 right now. Basically just causing a lot of routing and mayhem. Yeah, they've got like <laughs> five ships docked to them and fending them all off. That's very impressive. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to yeah, yeah. ship back to the... Uh, main engagement here and now I've started committing so my Roman legionaries out on the left flank throwing in their Pila and throwing in or were they using Plumbata at this time I guess they're still throwing using Pila at this time yeah I'm history. not quite sure about the full adoption uh I yeah I think they would have started to be adopted a little bit later after Diocletian's reforms they're definitely um, not throwing uh darts in this replay that's for sure but, yeah visually it looks like yeah. Pila for sure yeah so they're they're getting some shots in there and I'm committed with my Roman legionaries in the center as well so pretty much all my legions have gone in the Herculeani are still waiting in the back I believe and my cavalry as well I'm gonna do some leg chopping arm chopping head chopping and do decently here in the front line but the Marco Mani did have a bit of a rough time early on a lot of their center has collapsed I don't know the flanks doing a little bit better but this is where I've also committed some of my higher tier troops. Avocati cohort also getting sent in. And hopefully we'll be able to break the Saxons here. But remember that the Caledones are basically uh, are just sitting back there waiting to commit. And so we got to get rid of all these Saxon troops before we deal with them. Marco Mani actually do have a decent amount of stuff left. But they did take a lot of casualties in that first engagement for sure. Yeah, and your Herculeani are actually dropping. They're at 117 right now fighting against those pikes. Having a really hard time. So those units, I mean... If, if we're right about pikes being enhanced, they're going to be critical for Barbarians holding. I mean, if you can come against the Roman legions like this, bring a couple pikes and fend off Herculeani, that's going to be a pretty big game changer, I would think. Yeah, I'm not even sure that I noticed that they were pikes. Uh, they had the spear icon, so I kind of just committed in, and it looks like they waited in, and they're not getting the better of this engagement, that's for sure. We want to, obviously, not charge pikes from the front. Not the best way to use your heavy infantry in Rome 2 or any... Pretty much any total war, even not in Antilla, you don't want to charge pikes from the front. So on an open plane like this, you normally will have plenty of opportunity to flank and charge in from behind and get some Pila in from behind where pikes will really get shredded. And you can throw some nice Pila volleys in from the rear of a unit and absolutely mess them up. You get some nice sink kills here. Nice to see those return. But yeah, there is some wavering here. The Herculeani have actually, wow, big mass route from the Saxons. Oh my God, just instantly. It looked okay for them. The pikes were actually doing all right. I mean, to be fair, the Herculea Herculeani do have 140 kills at this point, but all of a sudden, their left flank broke, Romans collapsing in from the side, and it's complete mass route, bedlam on the Saxon line. Yeah, it looks like their general may have gone down, that may have tipped it, so now you're going to kind of reform behind your ally who's going to charge forward as my guys are going to start to emerge from the woods. I've been kind of eating a couple of the units piecemeal, uh, trying to be a bit cost effective, coming in with my Celtic nobles and my Celtic nobles, other other cavalry forces, and just eating up a couple units on the flank. Uh, and now I'm going to circle in on your band in the middle. I'm actually starting to get some ships that are uh, landing some of the troops. I'm going to get a little bit of an ambush off on your rear. I have some Celtic swordsmen and a pair of Celtic archers. I was hoping to sneak in behind you, maybe snipe a general. We'll see what that gets me. Um, but for now, I think it's going undetected. Yeah, I can see the uh, Celtic Swordsman on my screen right now, which means they're not hidden. So I did see them in the actual game as well. And I, I was like, I, I w yeah, here, now the archers are also, also showing them. So, I mean, it's only like 33. Like, you're not going to be able to do that much with it. But if you were able to shoot into maybe like a Berserker unit or any of these um, lower armor stuff. Yeah, the Berserkers especially. What's their armor? 10. 10 armor? Yeah, archers, even only 33 of them do quite a lot to them. Now, let's take a good look at these Berserkers. Now, the Marco Mani are straight up the Suebi tribe from Rome 2. I'm not sure they have any changes whatsoever. They have, like, the exact same roster. So, a couple of these uh, factions, 
maybe not like a whole lot of love given to them, but I guess yeah, when you think about it, like Christ of the third century, it's not their, I mean, their military just isn't going to be very different than what it was in late Rome two era, right? Like it's pretty much very similar time period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually one thing to note though, if you look at the Berserkers, they have 160 men per oh, unit, true. at least that, on this that, setting. Yeah, that, which is in, pretty impressive. Yeah, in Rome 2, they have 80 on ultra unit size. So they do get much bigger unit size, which is scary, because Berserkers are already scary in Rome 2. And so if you're adding double unit size, I don't know if they had any corresponding stat decreases, but I mean, if they didn't, yeah, Berserkers are going to be a force to be reckoned with, because they were already a solid choice for this way be in the uh, base game. They're charging right. in now into the front of some of these noble swords. Chosen sword band, actually. And let's take a look here at the Berserkers. Yeah, off the charge. And you can see their number just going up like crazy. It went off like six, seven, eight, right off the charge, and that will continue going up here. Even against Chosen Sword Band, they do have armor piercing, I believe, which will really help in prolonged melee fights, but of course they have that low armor class. So I guess anything with bonus versus infantry, anything with high melee attack, it will definitely take some losses. Yeah, so I'm looking at the lines of engagement here. It looks like you're kind of allowing your guy to kind of suicide himself into me, which makes sense. I mean, you want to save yourself um, for the battle to come and let me kind of, I guess, wait some of my early troops. So it's a, a good uh, good move while you kind of, uh, I guess, yeah, rest up. Some of your guys are tired, so you do want to rest them up. You probably want to bring in some of your light skirmishers, which it seems like you're starting to do. Um, I'm trying to see where my general is. Okay, he's on the left flank, a little bit back, so safe from anything that might come harass him. I don't think you have enough cavalry to try and threaten my rear because I have a fair amount of spears and calves, so you're going to be playing a bit more turtly, I think, at this point. No, and that is one thing about this time period that kind of differentiates Rome from uh, previous time periods is that in Crisis of the Third Century in this DLC in general, uh, you can start fielding the Cataphracta and some of the, uh, some of the heavier tier cavalry that they really weren't known for when Julius Caesar and some of the uh, earlier uh, leaders and tyrants were leading Rome. Uh, you can actually get some really powerful cab, but I, I didn't like to go for any of that in this one. I do have the Equitae Scutari, which are very strong, and they are heavily armored. They have, yeah, 100 armor, and you can see they got the badass looking mass. They don't have mail on their horses, but they themselves are quite heavily mailed. And I also have a Roman legionary cab, so it's definitely a decent cab, but not a lot of it. And you have, I think, four of the noble cavalry, right? So yeah, like, yeah, yeah, they're you have a powerful. lot of heavy caps, so that's definitely something I have to be worried about. And the good thing about Rome in general is that everything has Pila, and that's all great versus cab. So if I get some good shots in on the cab once they get tied down, and basically in general in Rome too, uh, cavalry is much less impactful, less terrifying than it was in Attila, for instance. So as long as I can tie your cab down, get some good Pila volleys in, I should be okay. But I don't have any dedicated spears, which may be an issue. Yeah, and this is kind of funny what you're letting ha uh, happen here with the uh, the Germanic tribes. Just, you know, you're watching while they kind of take the brunt I of this assault. I want the barbarians to die there. Like, they're annoying. They're on my northern border. I don't want the Marco Mani to be around once this, <laughs> once this battle is over. So let them kill themselves. Once they're dead, then uh, we can take all the glory and all the gold. Yeah, and that's kind of funny. There's a historical analog to that. I believe it was later on in Roman history. Uh, the Romans ended up doing that with, I think it was the Goths. Um, you know, the Goths were their allies at certain points in time, and in a couple of battles, I can't remember which one, but the Goths were put at, like, very precarious parts of the battle where they took a lot of casualties, and this caused their leadership to be pretty mad at the Romans, and I think it's one of the things that later led to the Gothic tribes kind of rebelling against Rome, and I think it's one of the things that made Alaric really mad at Rome, and that later made them rebel and eventually, I guess, sack Rome. Uh, so you're playing with a little bit of fire here, but it's a good political move. Yeah, we've got a big engagement going on now. The painted warriors from the Caledonians charging in, and even your Celtic nobles. And Celtic nobles, yeah. Using their Trying frenzied to get charge up the front, into the front of the Evocati cohort. Now they're tied down. That does mean I'll get some jab charges in. And this is what I'm talking about, cavalry being less impactful. And Attila, you could straight up do that to any infantry unit in the game and get like 20, 30, 40. I mean, frankly, a lot of times if they were moving, you'd get like 60 or 70 kills off the charge. Here, you got two. So quite a big difference in terms of how cavalry functions. Uh, you don't want to really charge braced or even moving heavy infantry from the front with cav, even with your own heavy cav. But it did do a lot of HP damage, both to your cav and to my infantry unit. And so that will definitely pay dividends as we move into the later stages of this game. But for right now, they're holding down the left flank, Avocati Cohort, doing what they do best, slaughtering stuff in melee and the Celtic Nobles, and now a lot of your lighter tier stuff, and actually some of the Scath of Shadows as well, who are unblooded at this point. Zero kills, 
looking to get in and uh, bonus for infantry if they charge in from behind could be a big issue for me and meanwhile Marco Mani are rounding on the main line and I'm starting to get surrounded a little bit of a crescent moon shape uh, from what's remaining surrounding my beleaguered Roman force so let's see how we do here yeah that's the thing that happened I guess at the end of the fight uh, is that you had a, a good amount of like core legionaries but I was just I don't know, like somehow I had, well, I not somehow, I had a fair amount of light troops that allow me to just envelop and get around the flank. So holding in the forest here has some bonuses to me. It's slowing you down. You've committed a couple troops there, a couple troops in the center, but just not having enough leg legions to rebuff me. You do have on your left flank, Evocadia and Herculiani trying to hold back my force. Cavalry of my guys are trying to shark and find a way through. Um, but uh, it looks like actually in the main line, in the center is where the Evocadia are gonna crack. Surprisingly with 100 men starting to waver, they're coming back now, but we were kind of surprised in the battle here to find Roman Legion's gonna, they're gonna start to waver um, at this point. It's kind of weird. Meanwhile, my gen and I believe, or I guess some of your heavy cavalry, the Celtic nobles are fighting. They've lost half their men, but my cavalry is doing their best and I gotta basically just keep cycle charging, keep my cab moving and keep getting charges off into the back of the infantry and shutting down these Celtic nobles who are really mean. The fact that you had four of them means that it's very hard for me to deal with that much mobility on the field, right? Because you're able to kind of charge in from wherever you want. Center is breaking for me. My armored archer is being run over. Here, your Caledonia uh, Osworn bodyguard, the general's bodyguard, have completely surrounded my Roman legionaries. And things are starting to look a little bit dire for me because in the central engagement, things aren't going very well. Back here, I am being and, overrun a bit, but I do have look some at, out of the out of the woods as well. <laughs> Five of my uh, Caledones are going to finish... Uh, the Marco Mani and just charge out of the woods and this is gonna be a really bad position for you while wow, your legions are tying up all the other flanks a huge hole is punched through the lines here and Meanwhile my Equitas Guitari getting a charge into the Caledonian Osworn who are in very good shape a 90 kills only lost eight men in the unit and Yeah, Avocati completely surrounded here very low morale 120 left in the unit But I mean what can men do against such reckless hate right when you're completely surrounded <laughs> like this like this is not a good engagement basically all my stuff being completely rolled over here and even the roman legionaries painted warriors just completely surrounding them this light infantry the the lower tier stuff that you brought kind of let you bring a more rounded out build and bring more infantry and the numbers have really helped you out quite significantly in this battle yeah i was surprised to see just how well they're trading i mean i guess i, I did have some core of like uh painted warriors which are pretty good on the attack i mean they're trading pretty well 100 kills on some of them so I had, like you said, a, a fair amount of light troops that could charge, absorb your legions in the center and kind of stabilize the fight and then put in some more, a couple Celtic swordsmen, so like mid-tier stuff, just to tide you over. And yeah, you'll win that fight in the long run, but then that allowed some of my elite troops to find, you know, gaps in the armor and just slip a knife through it. Uh, so I think that's what we're seeing here. Yeah, there's not much time left, honestly. Like, I'm being completely overrun. You completely broke my left flank at this point. My Roman legionaries in the center are up to 88 kills, but they'll soon route. And I mean, it's basically just my Equites Scutari, and I can keep cycle charging with them, keep racking up the kills. They're up to 140 kills right now. But with the Chosen Sword Band and Scott the Shadows moving in, their days seem numbered. And we have painted the snow red with the blood of friend and foe here. There won't be left, much left for either army. But uh, me sending in the Marco Mani didn't actually help. I kind of let them die and if i had supported them better might have been in a different position here but my political ambitions i guess got a little bit ahead of me and uh <laughs> i'm gonna get punished pretty heavily by the uh britannic tribe here so a little bit rough yeah yeah i'm trying to think how it could have gone a different way um i mean i don't know it just seemed like the swarming all of a sudden was just so powerful uh we were discussing a little bit while we were playing this maybe if any of the stat changes were leading to this uh, but we haven't done, like, a deep dive on it just yet. Yeah, we haven't looked too much at, like, stat changes or anything. I mean, when you think of something like... Oh, well, how much did the Scouts of Shadows cost? Do you remember? Uh, no, I don't think so. Were but they they're, they're fairly cheap. Yeah, yeah they're fairly cheap, I mean, cheap, if, I think. if you have a cheap bonus versus infantry unit that's fast, and they are fast because they're low armor, I mean, that's a perfect flanker, and that's a great way to equalize a sword engagement, right? Because if, if you're bringing Rome, yeah, you can go for some cost-effective builds for sure, but like you, you typically want to bring something high tier, at least Evocati, but maybe even like the Herculeani like I brought in this game, to anchor the line, just to give you that morale radius, that encourage aura, and when you do that, that means you're going to be fielding less swords on the main line, which means you might be vulnerable to getting flanked. So, I could have maybe 
Well, for one, I could have maybe invested a little bit less in the naval fight, and then I'd have more. Yeah, I mean, that's here. another dimension we're talking about here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's funny because we had that naval fight, and typically what you'll see is units will come from the naval fight and come support, and that can completely change the outlook of the battle because you win the naval fight, you come in, reinforce, and then there's that fresh legionary that only, like, dealt with like one raiding ship out on the ocean then it comes in and that can completely change the outlook of the game but here nothing is coming except for this one beleaguered <laughs> roman legionary like off in the distance and by the time they get there it'll be way too late i mean what is, what are they supposed to do like the entire army yeah. is gone by that point so the naval fight was awesome but it didn't actually end up making any impact on the land battle at all in this one right yeah we just kind of all neutralize each other um, I guess you could say you did win this engagement. Look, you were the last ship standing at sea. Uh, so you did bring uh, victory on that end. Um, my guys here, yeah, run, brought victory pretty handily. Uh, so perhaps we can call it even. Um, and I see I, you do also have some Marcomani in the background uh, rallying from routing, but they're all exhausted. And yeah, by the time they get to the fight, it's going to be over. Yeah, so this is over. I will say one thing that I do have to point out, and I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't carry over to the the final release on the 30th. I, there's, I assume they're still doing optimizing and all that. But uh, yeah, like is kind of common with the earlier access stuff. Um, occasionally, this content will run worse than it does in the final version. Fortunately, that wasn't how it happened with Mortal Empires here. I'm hoping that is what's happening, but the game is absolutely running worse for me than Rome 2 did before this patch. So I don't know if that's gonna be a permanent or uh, hopefully it won't be. But yeah, I mean, I had some frame rate drops that game that I really shouldn't be having because this is an old game and my computer can absolutely run it. Um, but hopefully that didn't affect the recording too much there. Look at the kills. Um, yeah, I mean, my general bodyguard, 210 kills killing it. Uh, the Roman legionaries out on the ocean did work for me, 244 kills. And yeah, my tower hexarim, the flagship essentially, 202. So they probably took on like two or three ships by themselves. Herculiani, 254 kills. All my stuff did work, but it just wasn't enough. Probably because I didn't actually support Marco Mani as much as I should have. I wanted to use him as a meat shield and kind of just sit back and throw Pila, and I, I probably should have committed my stuff sooner. Yeah, I'm looking at the Marco Mani exchange. Uh, I mean, I'd see they didn't do too much. Um, most of their guys suffering at the hands of my archers or uh, disembarking with obviously smaller troop numbers and getting torn apart. Um, so they didn't, their infantry on land didn't do too well, besides, I guess, the Berserkers and Wolf Warriors. Wolf Warriors actually 227. I don't know, it's hard to judge. Let's see their kills. 3k. Pretty good. I guess they did better than my ally. Looking at, yeah, the Saxony, not, not too great on their hand. So I guess our allies both kind of, I don't know, neutralizing each other? It's hard to call this battle. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at my side as well. A fair amount of kills, not as much as your Legionaries. Um, but yeah, I guess look at the Scat the sa Shadows with a couple Chevs on them. I think that means that they just traded cost effectively. Yeah, my elites, I think, just I mean, traded. Yeah, dude, if, if they're less than Legionaries, which I can pretty much guarantee they are because they have no armor. Like 207, yeah. 138 for them is sick. Yeah. That's really yeah, good. Although some of that was spent against the Marco Mani, but uh, yeah, how do we call this fight? Um, well, I mean, I, I guess we saw numbers kind of played a factor in it. The uh, investment at sea didn't yield the uh, the benefits that you would have liked. And then I guess a little bit of the engagement with the Marcomani was mistimed, maybe on your part. Could have had a different outcome if you'd supported them uh, and kept them kept them fresh. Because because I did I guess they did have a bit of a collapse that allowed me to clean them up pretty easily. Yeah. How was the performance for you that battle, by the way? Wasn't too bad, to be honest. Huh. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like terrible for me, but I was definitely dropping in like 30s a couple times that I really wasn't expecting to have with a game from 2013. But <laughs> whatever, man. I mean, it, it was a big battle. Lots of stuff going on. I guess there were. Yeah. Well. Yeah. To be fair. I didn't actually realize it was this big. It was... Dude, there were almost like 16, 17,000 people on the field for this one. That's that's pretty yeah. huge, actually. <laughs> I didn't realize it was that big. But yeah, that was fun battle for sure. I really love doing the naval and land combined assaults. They're, they're a blast to play. Especially when the naval fight is a little bit more convincing. And then you see one or maybe both armies decide to land whatever's left. And then do some more fighting um, on land there. But yeah, I mean absolute blast from both sides pretty close battle uh, but I think overall the numbers advantage for the Caledones did end up carrying it in the end yeah and that was that was true for the whole fight I mean even my ally had 7,000 more men than your ally as well so we had the numbers on our side overall yep so hope you guys enjoyed that one and there should more. be plenty more Empire Divided coming soon and you got anything else yeah. you want to say 
Well, I did say 7,000 more. I meant yeah, 700, 700, yeah. 700 more. I wasn't going to call you out on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we tipped the odds in my favor. I really needed to handicap that battle, so good game to me. <laughs> GG, dude. We had 7,000 more than the other guys. Pretty easy, bro. Yeah, oh, we forgot to mention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's it. Uh, we'll see you guys in more battles. we got a lot more stuff to come, and uh, yeah, see you in the next one. All right, see you guys.